All right, the last thing I'm going to cover in this chapter on kinetics is some of the microstructures that can be formed when you cast alloys. A typical alloy, if you take a molten metal and you pour it into some sort of cast, right, um, what you'll get is a microstructure that looks like this. If you were to chop it in half, you see um, what's called the chill zone with a bunch of really small grains, right, in the chill zone. And then you get the equiaxed zone in the center where it's sort of, um, there's no real orientation preference there in the center. But in between those two, you get the columnar zone where you get columns of grain growing along sort of along the temperature gradient. So again, this occurs because uh, the stuff in the chill zone, it gets immediately too cold over here, right? Temperature is low, but here in the center, the temperature is high. And so now you've got in this intermediate region across the two, you have this delta T across that region. And so they tend to grow along that temperature gradient, which leads to these sort of microstructures. Again, you can see the chill zone, the equiax zone in the region, and then the columnar region in between. So that's a very typical microstructure. Another really common thing that you'll see um, in metals is dendrites growing. So why? what are dendrites and why do they grow? Dendrites look like this. They look pretty wild. Um, they look kind of like snowflakes, like here's actual snowflakes and here's dendrites growing. So they look like that. So what on earth would give rise to that structure? It almost looks like it's the lamella structure, but it's not. This is not lamella because they're not all lined up. They're perpendicular. They're orthogonal to one another. So what is this and why does it come about? There's a really great demonstration here on Cambridge's website where they show what happens is you solidify under different conditions. Here's the two different conditions. In one case, um, let's say that you've got your material and the liquid is much hotter, right? So that'll be this first scenario. So you've got your solid and you've got your liquid. And at the interface, your liquid's at a higher temperature than your solid. So let's see what happens. At any given time, it's going to keep on solidifying, but if something gets ahead of it, if there's a little bump, like a protuberance that forms out ahead of it, what happens to that protuberance? Well, it's sticking out further into this hotter temperature. Since it's sticking out further into that hotter temperature, it's going to melt, right? And it's going to disappear. You see that there, how it just disappeared? We'll replay that. Check this out. So at the tip, it's at a higher temperature, so it melts, and it just comes right back to the interface. And this will just keep on happening until we form like a nice uniform solidification front. However, it's also possible to have this scenario, right? In this scenario, now imagine a scenario where your metal that's forming is at a high temperature and the liquid's just a little bit above it. Or what happens is, um, right here it says, if the latent heat of fusion is high enough, it will create a negative thermal gradient ahead of the interface, right? So in order to form the solid, if it has to absorb lots of energy, then your liquid's going to cool down slightly. And so now let's look at what happens. As it solidifies and a protuberance forms, right? So some little part of it gets ahead of the rest. Well, think about the temperature of that little protuberance. It's now going down, right? We're going to see that at the tip of that, it's lower in temperature. The tip is somewhere down here. So it has a driving force to keep on solidifying. It's not going to remelt and disappear. And then as it grows, things are going to grow off the side of it, and the exact same effect will happen. And so you end up with this um, dendrite growth happening. And that's a really important type of microstructure that, that can be created in metals, right? You can imagine what that would do to strength, right? How easy is it for a, a diffusion or for a dislocation to travel through this or for a diffusion to occur, right? It's going to strengthen and harden your material in much the same way as fine lamella will, right? So that's uh, how dendrites can form in a material.